Hello beautiful souls, welcome back. Antoinette here from Antoinette Intuitive Tarot and Jewellery. If you're watching this, please remember to give me a thumbs up so I know you like it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to, ting the little bell on the right hand side of the, of the subscribe button so you get notified as I upload um, videos. So. Let's begin. This is the Flickering Cauldron diary that I've mentioned in my previous video. So this is the Moon Diary for 2021 and this is the flick through just for this alone, okay? So it's come from the Flickering Cauldron at www.theflickeringcauldron.com. The link is on my other video but what I will do is I will um, transfer it over so you'll find it below um, so you can have a look on their website. So this is some information about other diaries and products that they're selling at the moment. So um, this is the one that we're doing today. They have a Celtic Moon Diary 2021. And then there's also this lovely Moon Phase calendar. So I'll bring this up a little bit. You can see there's all the Moon Phases, all those patterns are the Moon Phases on their calendar. And that's the wall calendar, so there's a quick um, glimpse of their wall calendar. So that's a wall calendar. So what do we call this one then? So this is more like a uh, moon phase wall chart, isn't it? Yeah, says so it there, wall chart. Okay, so that's some of the things that they have on their website at the moment. Without further ado, let's get into this diary. So as I've mentioned before, I've purchased this diary to help me to uh, become familiar with moon phases and, um, you know, the waxing and waning of the moons, and perhaps even as a female generally, um, there's some um, you know reasons for wanting to see if the moon affects my moods because I have heard rumours that um, it can do. So this is just a curious way of doing it, or a kind of a fun way for me to do this. So going straight into this beautiful diary, on here you can see we have um, markings for the new moon and the full moon, so they're at an easy glance on here for anyone that wants to see it. And then this tells us about the phases of the moon and the meanings that are kind of associated with them. So this is really nice, um, something certainly for me, I'm really interested in reading into all of this and seeing what it's all about. And they cover all of the moon phases, so it gets a bit confusing for some of us. We're not quite sure what's going on, especially, you know, because uh, probably aren't aware of things like the last quarter or the waning gibbous. Um, but it tells you like at which moon phases um, what you should be doing. So here we have the waning gibbous, ditching your negative vibes basically. Um, the waning crescent, time to rest. I like that one. And we have information here about the different types of moons. So um, I don't know, but I often hear people talk about super moons. So this is going to be really interesting for me. And I have never heard of a micro moon, but it's um, since having this, I've had a little chance to flick through and um, somebody else has talked about micro moons recently. So I now understand it's when the moon, when the Earth's at different axes, it makes the moon look like it's further away, but it's not. Um, and it just makes the size look slightly different. I could be wrong, but that's how I've interpreted it so far. I still have plenty of reading to do on the subject, of course. Um, information about all the eclipses, so things like the lunar eclipse, eclipse itself, um, total lunar eclipse, all new kind of wordings for me. And I do like this, it tells us about the retrograde. We keep hearing the word retrograde, and I don't know about you, but every time somebody says retrograde and has it affected you, I feel like something awful ought to have happened or um, something terrible is going to happen and I just sit waiting for it. It's not always true, but sometimes you might have something that goes a little awry. For instance, Mercury retrograde. Um, when Mercury was in retrograde, I didn't know this at the time, but I was having problems with all of my technology and apparently Mercury affects technology. So that's really interesting. So I now know when Mercury is coming up into a retrograde because I feel this, that's when I need to be super careful about my technology, back those appliances up because otherwise I might lose some interesting or some valuable data. And it goes through, so we've got all the different planets here um, and we even have Pluto is mentioned. Um, so we have something about the void of course moon, so I'm not too sure about this, so I still need to read up on these things, but it's all in here for you guys to have a good look through and enjoy. And the artwork, as I said in my last video, it's just, I mean, these pictures are, I love them. 
So here we have some stuff about correspondences. So we have the sun, god of light. We have some of the magical intentions that go with it. And the same for, you know, each one. You've got your Mercury, Venus, goddess of love. Um, the moon, goddess Luna. And again, there's some more for you. Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, or I think we're now pronouncing it Uranus because people like me who still find that word funny despite the fact I'm no longer in junior school, I still chuckle. I can't help it. I will never grow out of that, I don't think. <laughs> um, and I know some of you know exactly what I mean. Here we have a little bit here about Pluto, who is god of the underworld and the magical intentions that go with Pluto. So he's linked to astral travel projection, past lives, um, planetary magic, change and achievement. So there's a nice page there on Pluto to look at. Then we have the properties of the signs. So you have your fixed um, elements and you then have, because uh, I've been reading it, you then have mutable element signs. And then you have your cardinals. So um, in a nutshell, Geminis are fantastic and superior because that's what I am, so I've decided. Um, but they are a mutable sign, which means I think basically that they are um, way more flexible and adaptable than the other signs. There you go. And then we have a lovely zodiac wheel. So with the elements themselves, so it talks, goes into talk about the elements in a lot more depth here. So we have the earth elements, the water elements, the air elements, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and then we have the fire elements. Uh, you know, it does tell you who they all are here. Um, good points. <laughs> some, of, some of our not so good points are in there, um, but I'm not going to start astro bashing. <laughs> it's all subjective at the end of the day. Um, I mentioned in my last video, and I mentioned it here, that this diary is based on the northern hemisphere. And we have just come into our autumn equinox in the northern hemisphere. And the artwork that goes throughout this book is just absolutely stunning. I mean, I could spend hours just looking at this as a book itself rather than as a diary. Um, so here we have a little bit about Capricorn. We have some feather magic in here. We have a bit about gemstones. I'm jumping from page to page, I do apologise. It tells you a bit here more about um, Garnet, which is the January birthstone. And here we go into January. So we start on the 1st. And as you can see, it's not a page per week. It's, you know, as many um, dates on there as needed to fill the page, really, which is good use of the space because all the other information is in here. Um, and that doesn't really bother me that it doesn't end on a Sunday. And that the Sunday, sorry, you know, so it starts on a Friday, finishes on a Sunday there. I really am not bothered with this because um, it suits me down to the ground. So we have information about Capricorn specifically here with some interesting moony facts. And as you can see, the pictures are the correspondences for the moon phases on the diary. We have the moon ritual. It also tells you when you swap into the next star sign. We have moon ritual here, which is, this is basically what I've bought it for, is to learn about um, working with the phases of the moon, the energies of the moon, um, learning when to rest, when to push, when to use my energy, and when it can help focus my energy better. So we have um, about creating a moon ritual, you know, making your sacred space. I am in my sacred space here. So here we have one of my smudge sticks, some crystals, some elements from the garden, rosemary, sunflower seeds. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of, this would be my sacred space, I'd say. Um, bath rituals, grounding yourself. And then kind of, you know, how you make your ritual, like being thankful, journaling about it, and obviously closing down after you've done your little, um, it's kind of like a little bit of me time, really. So here we have something about the moons. And again, I owned up in my last video, so I'm, I'm quite keen to know about why they're called, why they have these names and what it means and what the correspondences are. So I'm, this is something that I will learn as I go through this diary. Um, I'm quite interested in that. This is really nice. So it tells you about, so for people who like to make um, little potions and lotions and things, this tells you about different types of things that might be in your cupboard that you can use that you might not have thought were there. So this is quite nice. Um, so somebody who might be wanting to make a uh, little money spell jar or something to attract finances with, to them. Here it says trillium would be what you use. However, you can use blackberry. 
So it just swaps some ingredients around so you know you have other um, ingredients to use. So this is how to do a little bit of moon candle magic. Um, I'm sure those of you who've had a birthday cake and blown the candles out are very familiar, in which case, with candle magic. Um, so here's just a little kind of bit more information on candle magic. And this one's for brown candles. And we have, um, so as you're going through the months, you can write down your wishes and your desires. So that's just a lovely space to be adding your notes and some more um, places to write here. So, oops, February. So it's much the same as we go through the whole diary. So I'll do the next bit a lot quicker. So this tells us about um, the candle mass or in bulk, which is on the 1st of February. And this is basically surrounding um, the Irish lady Bridget, I think is how we're pronouncing her name. Um, now called, it's Festival of the Goddess Bridget, basically in bulk or candle mass. Um, so that's 1st of February and there's some lovely information about this here. Then we have Aquarius. We've got, you know, lots of different um, holidays marked out on here. Feathers and dream catchers. A snow moon for February and a blue candle spell meaning there. Or blue candle, yeah. And here we have again, so as you go through your moon phases, you've got space to write down or jot them down as you're going. And then some more notes on the back. March. So we've got the long-eared owl in here, gemstones, pink feather meanings. Mother's Day. I always forget. <laughs> Pisces, new moon. St. Patrick's Day. That's a big one on my calendar. I'm half Irish, so. And then we, uh, we've even got spring equinox down here, so I know when we're looking at that one. And some information about um, the spring equinox and how it's linked into Ostara. And then obviously that takes us into Easter on the um, Christian calendars. So we've got the full worm moon on the 28th. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> That's so cute. And more space for your journaling, journaling prompts. Sparrow owl, white feather meanings. Going through April, Easter is on there. Aries new moon. Red spell candle meaning. I think you can agree the artwork and the colours in here are beautiful. Oh look, so we've got a super pink moon in Scorpio. That's the other thing I didn't touch on. So it does tell you, so though you've got the shapes of the moons, it tells you um, when they occur. Are they going to be visible? It says it should be 100% visible, I suppose, depending on cloud, however. Um, it's in Scorpio. We've got the sunrise and set time, moonrise and set time. And the fact that it's in Pluto retrograde or goes into Pluto retrograde is there as well. Um, so it does say um, in Scorpio. And it also has the symbol there too for you. It tells us all about the super pink moon. And the flowers it's related to. Nature, spirits, animals, birds, colours, gemstones, deities, herbs, scents, element. So it's an air sign and uh, yeah, very, oh, very nicely matched. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that owl, but um, we'll call him Bubo, <laughs> just to make sure we don't say anything we shouldn't. Uh, here we go. So we've got Beltane, which is um, 1st of May and often here we celebrate the Maypole, it's uh, May Day where we have um, like, you know, the Mayflower dances and Morris dances and um, we celebrate the crowning of the May Queen here. And we have some more information there about Beltane. It's traditionally marked also with a um, big kind of bonfire and celebrations. Um, and I think it's linked to the Oak King marrying uh, oh, I forgot what we call her. Basically, it's the May Queen. So she's called something before she marries him. So the preliminary May Queen marries the Oak King. That's what that is. Please do put that in comments down below. Help me out. Taurus New Moon. So there we go. 
Moving into Gemini. Oh, we have a full flower moon. And there it is. Some be more beautiful artwork. Information on owls. June. So what yellow feathers? Information about Gemini. Some more information about you see. They're they're a good sign. Um, summer solstice. So where are we? So we've got June here, June the 20th, oh, Father's Day. Some solstice is on the 21st. So this is about some of the information for solstice and obviously that's Stonehenge there for those who may be less familiar with the picture. And the moons for that. Okay, so how to scry with the crystal ball. There's your moon information. Grey feathers, cancer, there's the buck moon, I guess you've been following, so your sign, star signs are up here in the corner with these beautiful little pictures. Another candle spell, more notes, I like the notes. So Lamas, because I can't pronounce this one, which is the Feast of the Bread. I think this is a Welsh um, traditional harvest. Need to check. Because I think the long word that I can't pronounce is um, Welsh. Or is it Maybon? Something I will learn as the year goes on, no doubt. It's all new to me because there's all so much information that I'm learning at the moment. So we have August into September, brown feather meanings, the good old barn owls. So I was talking to somebody today who was telling me about um, when they ask, you know, their spirit guides for signs, are they going the right way? They ask for an owl. They ask them to send an owl. And so far, they seem to have, um, that's, that's what happens. They see an owl, there's an owl outside, it appears. And they don't live in the city, they live kind of, in the countryside, if you like, um, villagey sort of life. And so, yeah, even down to one appearing in the middle of the road while they're driving home. So that's quite a nice story that they were telling me. So here we have autumn equinox, which is what we have now just entered into. This is for 2021. So it tells us about the autumn equinox, the Feast of Maybon, the Harvest Festival. Um, and that's what you can see spread around me today. I've got, you know, some flowers, rosemary, some roses, some herbs from my garden to make my smudge stick or... Um, cleansing, smoke cleansing wand. Um, and I've got some various stones that I've collected on the way. So here we have oh, October. So moving into star sign of Libra. Halloween is my favorite. Here we have the October blood moon. Oh yeah. Nice little bit there on um, some soul cakes to make for Halloween or Samhain or Samhain. I've noticed different people pronounce it different ways. And more space to do your notes. And there's some lovely write up there about the tradition. So we go into Scorpio, red feather meanings. Um, the super new moon in Scorpio. My friend will be very happy about that because she's Scorpio. So what are our remembrance days, lunar eclipses, Ooh, dark moon correspondences. Dark full micro moon, there we go. So we've got a micro moon. I don't know if I've spotted it on any other pages. <laughs> Probably because I spotted the word Gemini here. That's how I uh, noted this one. That's really curious. A little caution is needed here whilst Gemini is associated with new ideas, creativity and also travel. It is an air sign, the combination of which with the twin factors can change the direction and therefore the outcome. Any spells usually without any warning. 
outcome of any spells, usually without any warning. Mr. Latter. And here we have some information about black candle meaning. And it's linked to Pluto, so that's why there's a nice big bit of Pluto at the front, if you remember. Then we go into Sagittarius, the Archer, spotted feathers. I don't really see many feathers, though we're surrounded by birds, I don't see many feathers around. I've said that, I'll see loads now, won't I? So here we are. Yuletide. Full cold, micro moon. Winter solstice. Isn't that a lovely picture? So Christmas Day. It's got the bank holidays marked in here. That's really nice to know. Looks like it's a nice long weekend for those that want to know in advance. And there we have the um, ivory spell candle meanings and the night before Christmas poem. What a lovely way to finish the diary. Wishing everyone the flickering cauldron a from the flickering cauldron a wonderful, healthy and prosperous new year. Here's one that I'm quite curious about, the Celtic Moon Diary. Um, mainly because, as I've already mentioned, I am half Irish and it just looks quite curious, you know, also learning a bit more about the Celtic um, history, the Celtic tree, animal signs, correspondences, um, the Ogham alphabet, tree of life, Celtic symbols, their meanings, Celtic paganism, Celtic magic, home of the Druids, Alban Arthen, Celtic mythology, what else we got here, Celtic dragons, Stone Age, uh, sorry, Stonehenge, Sabbaths, Equinoxes, the Elder Futhark runic guide, and other Celtic related stories and so much more because these, these are jam packed, let's be honest, there is so much in here. Um, but that's really nice to see because I've just made myself a set of runes. So I think it will go neatly with it. But there's so many great things from this website. So I would go and have a look because look at this witch's companion. I mean, this is just fascinating. Again, this one's got moons, phases, herbs, colors, gemstones, magical elements, witch's tools, working altars, incense, magic oils, potions, spell work, candle magic, and then they've got some information about witchcraft, planetary days and hours, when to avoid magic, deities, scrying runes, numerology, magic symbols, sabbats, solstices, recipes, magic of trees, familiars, correspondences, spell and ritual worksheets, along with blank journal pages to write your own, I mean that, you know, for any um, person starting out, wanting to learn, not sure how to begin or where to write it all down, this would be just brilliant than trying to you know that whole um how do i start it what type of book do i use i don't want to ruin my new book it sounds like that's a great starting point i have to admit that was the first thought that went through my head with this one was what a fantastic starting point i almost want to combine all three together and um, create my own little uh you know almanac <laughs> with it all in um and then coming in 2021 for 2022 so for um, the year starting 2022, they've got the Egyptian moon diary. So again, another really fascinating thing to be bringing out, something I certainly don't know anything about. Um, and then we have some information about the art and all the artwork, the artist. Um, little disclaimer there, looks like we've got a little owl made up of lots of feathers that we've gone through with the feathers throughout the book. And then we've got a quick glimpse at um, 2022 here, again with the moons on there and you've got your little bit of information telling you what's in here at the back um, so I read that in my last one so I won't read it out again for this one but there we go so that is the moon diary 2021 from the flickering cauldron and I think it is just superb absolutely superb um, I will just thank them because I had obviously one and my, I did a quick review on it, a quick run through, and my dog got hold of it. And this is what's left after I've repaired it. So she removed this, it wasn't working. She completely chewed up the top, and then she ripped pages, all these pages have had to stick back together. She just ripped pages out, it doesn't turn properly anymore. She just ripped all the pages out, and um, because the ladies at this website are just so wonderful, they um, very kindly sent me a replacement. Um, but yeah, so, oh. so this is what happens. Don't leave it near your dog because she 
she properly wrecked it. There's pages inside there that are unusable. Anyway, that being said, I'm sorry it took so long. Thank you for staying with me. Congratulations if you did. I hope you enjoyed this um, little diary flip through and I do recommend it. I wholly recommend it. So go visit their site, have a look and check out those other ones. I mean, let's face it, the Celtic one just looks gorgeous and the um, one for witches, well, everything you need. So thank you for watching. Have a blessed day and I will see you again. Bye.